ironoverload.io hardcore number nine steve smith and the mobster joining me what's up buddy how you doing we're bringing you the truth we're going to talk about prima bowling in this episode really really interesting steroid now the chemical name of prima bone is methan methan olone and it's by far the most popular injectable anabolic steroid for cutting from the 70s and back in the golden era. And the reason it was so popular back then is it was one of the few steroids they could get access to, number one. And number two, yeah. Arnold popularized it because it was said that Arnold would use Prima Bolin at pretty, pretty moderate to, to high dosages um, ahead of competitions. And that was his favorite anabolic steroid. So guys from the 80s and into the 90s, also love Prima Bowling. However, over the past 10 to 15 to 20 years, Prima Bowling has fallen out of favor. It is no longer even in the top 10. I would wager back in the 70s, Mobster, Prima Bowling would have been the, at least number one or number two on the list. I'm Today, two, 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 two or three, Steve. I'll put yeah. number one, D, D Bolt, and then, yeah. then Primo and, 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 and one or two others. Some yep. formal test. So uh, definitely a yeah, top two, top three steroid back then, but today not even in the top 10, not even in the top 10. So it's falling out of favor. So we're going to talk about why it's falling out of favor. We're going to talk about how to use it if you want to try it out. I'm all for experimenting with anabolic steroids to try them out, make your own decisions instead of reading and listening to these gurus who give their opinions on it. Try it out yourself and make your own decision if it's right for you. So Arnold, again, um, big, big old school bodybuilding guys who love old school bodybuilding they loved using prima bowling into the 80s um the issue with prima bowling that a lot of guys there's a conception out there that it's a weak steroid and it is on paper the anabolic and androgenic ratings are low on it and it's one of the weaker steroids that you could possibly get and the thing is prima bowling is interesting because the way it is structured it is a DHT dihydrotestosterone derivative. So you're not going to get aromatization. You're not going to get the estrogen conversion when you take primobolin. So by taking primobolin, you don't have to worry about the gaining the gynecomastia. You don't have to worry about the water retention. You don't have to worry about the bloat. Back in the 70s and 80s, they had to worry about that because they didn't have access to antiestrogens the way we do today. So Prima Bowling back then, that's one of the reasons it was so damn popular in those days. And today it's fallen off. Now we have things for estrogen. So you don't have to yeah. run tons of Prima Bowling and not worry about estrogen issues. You can run tons of testosterone and you don't have to worry about water retention. So back then, Primo was their testosterone and that's why. They loved it so much. So, Mom, sir, I'll bring you in here. Give us your initial thoughts on Prima Bowling. I think something, we, when we talk about Arnold, we're talking about competing 90s, 70s, 80s, and 90s bodybuilder, Steve. And one of the things that Primo is very, very good for, and, and another reason why it's kept in uh, cutting cycles, is because it, it, it helps you to maintain, or retain, should I say, that hard work for muscle that you've been all the off season, working your ass off to put on five pounds, 10 pounds, whatever the hell you've added. And now you're dieting down. Now you want to get cut if you're just an average Joe or you want to go on stage if you're a competing bodybuilder. Now, what happens an enormous amount of times if you fuck up, guys, is that, that you gain that 10 pounds in the winter time and into the spring. And then you start the diet and you lose like six, seven, eight pounds. Now, Primo is one of those drugs that says if it's muscle that we're talking about, not fat, not water, not bulk, but muscle, I want you to try and keep as much of that hard work for during your season muscle. And Primo is a great drug for that. It's, it's low calories, diets, competition training, the extra cardio that you guys are doing, the, the, the higher volume that some of you use in the gym. And yet Primo's holding on to as much of the muscle that you gained in your season as you possibly can. So that right there is, is a drug. Steve and I talked about an appreciation, and I'll touch on it now, Steve. I says, because I'm not a bodybuilder, I'm way, way more of a strength athlete, way more of a bodybuilder. Primo's never been on my radar uh, for me to use personally. 
However, as I said to Steve in the pre-show, it would, I think it's almost certainly going to be on my radar if that was my inkling, if that was the direction I wanted to go in. And especially if I decided I wanted to compete. So I'm going to want to hold on to my muscle. I'm going to want everything to shine. And Primo, for those guys, I mean, think of the time, as Steve said, the accessibility for drugs there wasn't huge. You might have five or six drugs in the trunk of some guy's car at the back of the gym. Primo was in that trunk. It was in that box. It was in his odal. And it was popular, but it was especially popular, Arnold, as I touched on already, for competing bodybuilders to diet down, to have the pop, to have the shine, to have the look, but by keeping as much muscle as possible. It, it, it's kind of a given, Steve, that you're going to lose some, but Primo is helping, you to, it's helping you to hold on to as much of that gain as you possibly can while you're getting down to the low sub 10s, sub 8% body fat levels and, and, and better and looking to shine on stage. Guys that are looking to cut, looking to shine on the beach, et cetera, et cetera. No one wants that stringy look. And what the hell, you spent six months gaining, six months bulking. No one wants to lose that. But I get that needs to be a point. Training needs to be a point as well. Back to you, Steve. So there's two different versions of Primabolin. There's an injectable Primabolin, and there is an oral Primabolin. So... This is the thing with Primobolin. If you use the oral version, it's not going to be 17 alpha alkylated. So really, it, it's not going to be, there's not going to be much that's bioavailable because it's going to get broken down by the liver. And there's not going to be much left. So it's one alkylated and it's 17 beta esterified. So as a man taking the oral Primobolin, don't even waste your time with it. I mean, no. and if you if you want to try it, you can try it 100, 120, maybe even 140 milligrams a day. And it just doesn't make any sense to even waste your time using it. But where it is good is for females. So females can use somewhere around 30, 40, maybe 50 milligrams a day, and they'll get good results because it works perfect for females since it's not very bioavailable. It's not liver toxic. And it's not going to give you any type of negative side effects like other in a oral anabolic steroids may. So it could be a good option for females. But as a male, forget about running the oral version, please. I do not recommend it at all. Um, yeah. In terms of the injectable, it makes more sense to run the injectable. Now, I've had the displeasure, Mobster, of using okay. Bayer Primabolin from back in the day. And Bayer nice. Primabolin was like injecting motor oil. Uh, a 25 gauge needle isn't thick, thick enough. You've got to use a 23 gauge. And it, it was absolutely brutal when it comes to post injection pain. Horrible, horrible oh, steroid. Bad, <laughs> luckily, bad. since then, for those of you who want to try Primable on today, luckily, they've come up with better options for you because you got to keep in mind back in those days, you had to take it and it came in 100 milligram per milliliter. So the amp. You have to break over the amp and then extract the 100 milligrams and then break over another amp and extract another 100 milligrams to get 200. And then that you'd have to inject a 2cc. So it's absolutely brutal to inject that much of something that was so thick. So, but nowadays it's, it's good because a lot of underground labs have come around and they've made Prima Bowling where it doesn't have to hurt anymore. Uh, Primobolin doesn't have to have post-injection pain. And there's also labs that have come out with 200 milligram per milliliter. So that's good because that's less injecting volume. So you can inject yeah. 2.5 cc's and that would be 500 milligrams versus back in the day, you'd have to inject five cc's to get just 500 milligrams. So the rumors out there said that Arnold used to take one amp of, of Primabolin and inject that per day, which was 100 milligrams. So he'd run about 700 milligrams a week of the Primabolin. That was yeah. a pain in the butt having to inject that on every day. And I know it affected him, especially if there was post-injection pain, because it's hard to work that muscle for a couple of days after you inject into it. So he must have really hated using Primabolin because I can't imagine running Primabolin for 12 weeks and having to inject every single day motor oil no 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 so but like i said today it's a lot easier so the dosing for prima bowling um really 500 milligrams is the moderate sweet spot 
for a man, but some guys go higher. We see guys who are doing physique competitions. They'll go 700, 800, 1,000, even 1,200. And guys back in the 80s were jacking up their dosages trying to keep up with their peers. So back in, back in those days, they would run over a gram of pre ball in a day. But if you're just a gym rat, try 500 milligrams a week. And that would be suitable for what you're looking for. And you need to run it for a minimum of 10 to 12 weeks, minimum. Because if you only run it for a few weeks, it's not going to be, it's going it's to, it's an enanthate ester, right? So it's got a 10, 12 day half-life. So it's going to take about five, six weeks to reach peak levels in your body. So you cannot run it for less than 10 weeks, or you're just going to be kind of wasting your money. So I recommend at least 10 to 12 weeks uh, of running the Prima Bowen. So, and then run a kickstart with it. Um, a kickstart will kind of help, you know, you get some effects initially and um, the first four weeks. And, and during that time, the Prima Bowling is kind of building up in your system and reaching peak. So that would be, that would be the dosing for it, Mobster. Um, what to stack with Prima Bowling? It really makes sense to stack something androgenic with Prima Bowling. So throwing in some testosterone is a good idea. Throwing in some d bowl like Arnold used to do and the guys used to do back in the seventies is a good idea to give it a little kick. And even something like tremble, a little tremble on in there could give it a little kick. But if you want to keep the side effects to a minimum, don't do the trend with it. Do, do something else. So mom, sir, give us your thoughts. Um, Very quick question you... for you. Steve. I, I'm trying to remember something. Uh, is, isn't Primo the one that was the most fake drug? Uh, of any steroid in terms of you trying to get a legit version versus an underground version that wasn't what it said on the label. Is that not right? I would say among injectables, absolutely, yeah. Anavar yeah. would be the number one with oral, but injectables, Prima Bolin, because it's yes. it's very expensive, and you bring up a good point. Prima Bolin is very, very expensive steroid. I think a lot of that has to do um, – a lot of that has to do with it being – back in the day as a pharma, uh, you know, pharmacy grade and then getting banned. It was FDA banned. So pharmaceutical companies couldn't produce it anymore. And there was still a very high demand for it. Very, very high demand during the, during the, the eighties and early nineties. So what happened was underground labs came in and started producing it and, you know, Hey, they want to make money. Right. So they're going to charge top dollar for it because, Hey, they can, there was so much demand after it got banned. Yeah. So that kept the price elevated. So really the price doesn't mean anything in terms of, you know, how potent the steroid is or the quality yes. or any of that stuff. Yeah. It's just a simple, that's what people are paying. And I think that's one of the reasons too, mobster. I don't think, I know it's one of the reasons it's no longer a popular steroid anymore because the price has not come down enough. Um, the price has price. come down, but has not come down enough to justify using it versus using other steroids in the same class. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll change the subject now, Steve, but I mean, talking about uh, side effects, we discuss this kind of stuff on the forums all the time, whether we're talking about SARMs or whether we're talking about anabolic steroids. And, and, and the number one thing that gets discussed is suppression. So rumors about Primo being safe enough not to require post-cycle therapy, oh, they're just plain wrong. Uh, it is suppressive. There are, is, there are going to be issues. You will suffer after a cycle in terms of suppressed testosterone levels, natural, natural testosterone levels. So that's number one. I keep that in mind. Number two, especially when we're referencing the oral version, but to a lesser degree, the injectable version, it will be harsh, hard on your liver. And therefore, again, as we discuss in other podcasts, you're going to need something like Entugard, a liver and or organ protectorant, because that's ju you just do, guys, with the alkylated in the form of the oral version, it's going to cause you problems. And especially if you're rich enough and lucky enough to be able to run it at high doses. So keep that in mind. And something else, which we talked about in the article here, it's, it is one of those drugs, like a lot of DHT derivatives, which is going to be harsh on your hairline. Guys, I said this a million times. It's also, funny enough, Steve, it does get discussed from time to time. Have you ever noticed how many guys in the Mr. Olympia shaved their heads? Uh, and this is because sometimes, even with the genetics they've got on cycle, they will experience hair thinning. 
Now, a lot of the time, and I think Ronnie Coleman here is a very good example, shaved head, winning the Mr. Olympia. But I've seen photographs of him both before and since with the, a small throat going on and, and no obvious ball patches, et cetera, et cetera. But that's his genetics. We have guys come on the forums all the time. And if there's any genetic predisposition in your family for male pattern baldness, and male pattern baldness is a euphemism, females get the same problems, then there's an issue or a potential issue for you to lose your hair. You've got to either say, make the choice and say, I'm going to shave that hair and, and that's the end of it. I'm going to use a harsh drug like finished ride, uh, which I, I would prefer not to just because of the side effects that come with that drug uh, or, or, or not use Primo, simple as. Size. So again, this is not one of those drugs you've got to use. None of them are. You make the choice, you decide, and you weigh up the pros and cons. If, as I say, if I was that worried about my hair and I looked around my family tree and I could see that there's a bunch of guys and women with hair issues, then I might not want to choose Primo into my cycle. And that's just, that's kind of obvious. I reiterate, it, it is suppressive. You will need to sort out stuff in your pro-cycle therapy. It isn't a drug that you can take orally or injectably and not have suppression issues. That's something that seems to be kind of one of those bro science things that's done around for years. Steve will tell you, he's seen the bloods, he knows how this stuff works. If you can see the bloods, you can see that as a suppression from the numbers, then that's it. it the rest is just bullshit bravado. And, 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 and to be perfectly honest, Steve, sometimes when people are trying to sell you drugs, just a plain good old fashioned light. You've seen the blood results. What do you say? Yeah, and that's one of the main side effects of primobolin, just like any other anabolic steroid. Aside from pre, uh, proviron on some guys, you're going to get shut down on Primo Bowl. And I don't know this misconception out there where people think, oh, Primo Bowl doesn't shut you down. It most certainly does. Yes. Another side effect that you can watch out for with Primo Bowl, and there are DHT side effects because it is a DHT derivative, but the way it's structurally done, it's not as pronounced as other DHTs, like say Winstrol, for example, which will yes. absolutely shed your hair rapidly. Primo Bowl does it in a more slow process. Same thing with your prostate doesn't inflame your prostate necessarily like some of the, like Winstrol would, but it does have some effects. So, you know, if you run the, run it, you know, 10, 12 weeks, you'll mitigate the side effects. Now, if you're running it 16, 20 weeks, like some guys have done, then you can expect to definitely have yeah. some issues, issues with that as that DHT keeps, keeps building in your body. Another side effects that Prima Bolin has that I've noticed is it punches your libido a little bit. And I, I attribute that, it depends on the person. If you're more of a reactor to androgenic effects, where you run androgenic steroids, like say Trenbolone or lots of testosterone, you get a huge boost in libido increase. Primobolin is gonna do the opposite. Primobolin, because it's not androgenic enough, it's basically gonna go in your body. Even if you're running testosterone with it, it's going to kind of hit your libido a little bit, it may affect your erectile health a little bit because it's so damn mild and you're not going to get those androgenic effects. So you want to keep that in mind when you're using Primable. It's not something you're going to take and want to punch the wall and want to have sex, you know, five times a day and want to go bang hookers and all that stuff that you get from trend and, and high doses of testosterone. It's, it's not going to do that. It's, it's very, very mild. And with that comes the mild effects as well. Quick question for you, Steve, and this is something that I've noticed online. I personally have never run N2 Generate, for example, when I've been on, on, on any cycle. For me, it's always been part of my post-cycle uh, stack to get, you know, get my, my natural testosterone uh, back to where it was before the cycle. But I know that you, for example, and others recommend using a product like N2 Generate during a cycle. Would Primo and N2 Generate be a good mix from your opinion? something that's going to help with some of those side effects that we just referred to, specifically that uh, mild suppression of libido that you just referred to? Yeah, something like a strong testosterone booster like that would definitely help. It's got a lot of tribulus, fedosia, so those herbals. You can't go wrong using those herbals, but you want, most certainly want to run them in your post-cycle therapy. So make sure, oh, yeah, just yeah. like any other, because you're running the Primo Bolin so long, you know, you're running at least 10, 12 weeks, right? So the longer you're on a cycle, 
the harder it's going to be to recover. We know that that's, that's not even debatable. We know that from blood work. So if you're going to run a long cycle with Prima Bolin, you want to basically make sure you're running a good solid post cycle therapy. So you, your body can recover properly. So other than that, with the side effects, I mean, really there's not much side effects mobster, um, you know, to, to really worry about because it doesn't cause that water retention. You're not going to run into those estrogenic side effects because it's not androgenic. You're not going to run, you're not going to run into androgenic side effects. So really when you're on Primo, it's almost like not being on anything. You don't feel any different. Uh, you don't, you don't feel the, that difference that you would running other steroids. So it's a nice steroid to use. If you just want to run something smooth, something conservative, and something that's going to not drastically change your physique. Like if you're worried at work that people are going to point at you at work, like, oh, dude, you're on steroids, then yeah. Primo Bolin is a good option for you because people aren't going to be pointing to you when you're on Primo Bolin for 10 weeks and be like, yeah, dude, you're on steroids. No, you're on steroids. They're not going to do that. But with other steroids, they would. If you're in trend for 10 weeks, oh, my God, everyone at work would be pointing their finger at you, making fun of you for using steroids. Yeah. From their broken noses. <laughs> I just think, Steve, it may just be as simple as if it's so damn expensive in relation to other drugs and the availability of legit Primo versus fake Primo, it occurs to me, Steve, that perhaps if it was cheaper and people decided to run it at higher levels, we might be having a different conversation. But it's, it's, that's, it goes back to something that you and I said in previous podcasts. It does, it's not necessarily something like, you know, where you're going to see a gram plus or whatever else, even if it was cheaper. So, again, guys, when we talk about these doses that we, took, we recommend specifically, it's because assuming you can afford it and you've got the real deal, run it at the doses that we're talking about to get the results that we want you to get. And, again, think long-term versus short-term. If you had, if I win the lottery tonight, Steve, and I suddenly decide I want to be a, 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 a competing bodybuilder and I can get access to, which because I know I can, the same as you, we know we go with our approved sources, suddenly decide that oh, I'm going to use Primo because it's so fucking damn good because we know it is. And I can take those kind of levels. I can afford it now. I, I've got hundreds of millions of pounds in the bank. Then, then I would argue that if you start to double up on the dosages, you will see more side effects. It's the same argument that we've referred to in recent months when we say about Psalms. Psalms as they come, at the levels that we said tell people to take, and uh, because they are mild, don't come uh, with harsh side effects. But if we double, if we triple, if we quadruple the dosages, we might see more issues. And I think to me, all things considered, with the doses that we recommend, you shouldn't see crazy stuff happening. But if, guys, if you're rich, if you decide to go crazy stuff and double and triple up on the numbers that we're talking about, then the side effects will mount up. And it's that same old, same old, Steve, side effects versus gains. Do you have that much more muscle? No. Would the, would the side effects be that much greater? Yes. Similar as that. But Primo is, after all, I mean, it's a, the doses that we talk about, it is effectively a mild drug with some side effects, all drugs as per usual. Uh, but it is for me, and again, guys talk about the golden age of bodybuilding, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. Look at the physiques that were presented on stage and how many of those physiques would have been using Primo. It's, it's to me, that's just a given, Steve. It is for that and that alone, it would be something that I'd want to try if I was a bodybuilder because that's the physique. That's the stuff that got you into training. That's what even with me, with my aspirations now, that you and I have probably had the same aspirations, the same images that got us into the gym. And Primo would have probably been more or less a staple in those bodybuilders that we were talking about. We would have seen that and we would have thought, damn, I want to look like that. Primo is one of the drugs that would nearly, I would say 90% of the athletes that you and I looked at back in the day were on some sort of Primo. What about the um, amounts, Steve, the cycles and so on? So let me give you, I'm going to give you the seventies golden era cycle. Then I'm going to give you a modern way to run Primo bowl. And so right. to give you guys some ideas here. So the Arnold stack back in the seventies, this is what the guys were running. They were running hundred milligrams a day of the injectable Primo bowl. And he was running about 20 milligrams a day of Diana bowl. So that was a good stack The the Primo bowl kind of out the yin and yang with the D-ball. The D-ball gave it a little kick. 
And Primo Bowling kind of gave gave him that physique. So that's that's the stack that they would run. No testosterone, no nothing, you know, nothing else in there. Just that Primo Bowling and Diana Ball, perfect stack. That's that's the golden age of bodybuilding um, cycle. Now, a modern way to run Primo Bowling would be running Primo Bowling at five or six hundred milligrams a week, and then stacking in some testosterone, maybe two hundred. 250 milligrams a week of long ester testosterone, and you can mix them together. So that's a great way to reduce post-injection pain, by the way, is oh, mixing, yeah. Yeah, mixing yeah. oils yeah. in the same syringe. Yes. And then you want to keep an eye on your estrogen levels. If your estrogen levels start inching up a little bit after a few weeks on, you want to throw in some aromacin, a light amount of aromacin, maybe five, 10 milligrams of aromacin. You're not going to need much in most situations. And some of you may not need aromacin at all. So that would be a great little stack if you wanted to run something for 12 weeks with low side effects to give you a nice, clean muscle uh, look. I'm going to say one thing here, Stephen. This is something you've probably seen me comment about on the forums a bunch of times. Uh, and it's one of those probably where Steve and I would differ. And it doesn't mean either one of us is right or either one of us is wrong. But I've never, ever, Steve, been a fan of wait until I've got a problem, wait until I see issues, even with steroids with low, low chances of side effects when it comes to using some kind of AI. My, my AI, and again, I'm not using Primo, but my AI is more or less from day one, you know, second or third day of my oral cycle, whatever cycles I've done ever from, from the beginning till now, I've nearly always used something more or less in the first few days and run it all the way through the cycle. I mean, the way that I look at these things, and it's just one of those mobsterisms, if you like. I, back in the day, the rumors were that if you use certain kind of aromatized inhibitors, whether it was something like Novadex or, or aromas, Aromacin or whatever, the suggestion was you, you're going to lose a percentage of your gains. Well, I said, well, fuck it, I'll lose a percentage of my gains then, because I would rather lose 5 or 10% of my potential gains, and that's in strength, that's in muscle, that's in, in, in size, whatever versus uh, the idea of waiting until I've got some issues with gyno, waiting until I've got some issues with irritation. So for me, it's always been one of things. I mean, Steve's way, way bigger than I am, again, on the blood test. And so he would argue, and I, I think he would be right in this particular set of circumstances, because Steve is correct in this particular thing, and it's just something that not everybody listening will apply, but we give out the advice as we should. And that would be pre mid and post cycle blood test. Now, Steve would argue quite properly, if you're doing bloods during a cycle, especially if it's a long enough cycle, at least a couple of times, then you will see specifically the numbers that you need to worry about in the bloods. You're not waiting until you've got irritation of nipples. You're not waiting until you see shy kinds of kind of, or, or, or your hair falling out or whatever. So you are literally looking and you can tweak the dosages. That would be the on point perfect. Now, here's something else, Steve, that I would probably want to reiterate as well. When you look at the cycles, a la Arnold and others, again, 70s and 80s bodybuilders, what was very common, especially for the pros, if not for the average Joe, was that when you got to a certain level as an Olympian, shall we say, you nearly always went to see a doctor. And quite simply, it's because you were famous. You were competing, you was in the magazines, they'd seen you on ABC World Sports, your name got known, and you you, you got offered. You weren't dealing with guys at the trunk of the car and in, at the back of the gym or whatever anymore. You might have started like that, but it got to the point where sources would get in touch with you and doctors would offer to treat you. And legend has it that there was a specific doctor that the guys in uh, Venice Beach would go to. And again, this is a guy that's monitoring your blood. He's checking your blood pressure. He's doing all the things that we talk about now, Steve, uh, in a perfect and ideal situation, the best way, the optimal way to run a cycle, where this guy is monitoring you and he's going to give you drugs that he has available then. And again, as Steve says, especially when you come to AI, is way more availability in the 90s and the 2000s and onwards than at that time. But when you've got a doctor specifically checking, this is not a TRT doctor, it's like a bodybuilding fan doctor. And he's trying to, as best as possible, to get you as big as possible, to make you the best Olympian as possible, because he's a fan, but at the same time, keep you as healthy as possible. Uh, and that would certainly be the ideal situation. So to have a doctor monitoring you during a cycle, 
would be for me. And again, you know, I win the lottery tonight. That would be perfect. Uh, this is the reason why we advise you to get bloods. I'm, I'm probably, maybe it's one of those risk factor things, Steve. I'm a low risk kind of guy when it comes to this kind of stuff. So for me, I'd rather lose five or ten percent of my lifts or five percent percent of my gains, and say, "Damn it, you know what? I'm not going to wait. I'm going to take my AI from day one." But Steve's quite correct. If you're getting your bloods done, as Steve recommends, if you're on point with these kind of things, if you are, and again, Steve and I both be in this category. If you know by now, as we do, how your body responds, you're going to be more fine-tuned. But for you younger guys, and especially for you younger guys that have only got one or two cycles under your belt, you may not have enough experience to recognise the signs. To, and again, this is all dose-dependent, as you say, Steve. It's also the length of your cycle dependent and so on and so forth. These variables, guys, We again, when we're talking about the cycles that we recommend and the doses we recommend, the information you give you is valid to that. If you decide to double up or you decide to double the length of the cycle, then the risk factors change and you need to be aware. So for me, I'm a low risk kind of guy, Steve. AI from day one. Steve says quite correctly, if you do your bloods, you can see the numbers and then you can either tweak the, tweak the dosages or you can introduce an AI like aromacin and so on and so forth. Back to you, Steve. Look, at the end of the day, you know, you just got to weigh the economic costs of payment bowl and to see, you know, hey, is this stuff worth it or not? And most of you yeah. are going to look at it, just full disclosure, and you're going to be like, yeah, it's, it's just not worth it. I can get the same results on equipoise. I get the same results stacking some equipoise with some Astron or stacking some equipoise with some Anavar and, you know, and get the same kind of side effects, you know, low side effects, and also get that lean muscle mass difference. And then some of you will be on the other side of the aisle, like we talked about on a previous podcast, Mobster, where they say, you know what, I can take Tremblone and in two weeks get more gains than I could on Primo Bowling in 16 weeks. So to me, yeah. it's not worth yeah. it to spend all this more money on Primo Bowling when I could just take Tremblone and spend a tenth of the amount of money and tenth amount of time to get the same result. So you're going to look at it different perspectives. It's not right or wrong. It kind of bothers me on forums sometimes when people think, oh, yeah, my perspective is right. Your perspective is wrong because we're all going to have different perspectives. Not everybody can afford to run a Primo cycle. The first time I ran Primo Bowling back in the day, this was before we had access to so many different underground labs and so many different sources. But I ended up ordering international and I think I spent close to twelve hundred bucks on a Primo cycle. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and um, you know, was it worth it for my cycle to spend twelve hundred dollars? No, it wasn't. I could have, I could have ran, uh, spent a third of that, and on an equipoise cycle, and got just as good of results, and kept my side effects just as low. So at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong. It's just opinions, and uh, you know, hopefully this podcast, you know, that's what this podcast is all about. We're giving you kind of the facts in our own experiences using these compounds, and see. Um, there are several athletes who have been busted for Primo Bowl and uh, Alex Rodriguez and Barry Bonds. They got caught for uh, for using Primo Bowl. And so Primo Bowl is used in professional sports. It's been used. And, um, you know, a lot of professional bodybuilders have gotten away from it, in, especially in recent years. But I'm sure there are some guys who are still messing around with it, especially in more of the physique uh, category. So, Mobster, give us your final thoughts and, and take us into the disclaimers. Another great show. I think it's one of those drugs that, I mean, you and I both have our personal preferences. When but the availability of drugs for us now, the performance and hustle drugs specifically, is greater now than it's ever been. And the proof sources that we have on the forums shows that. I mean, back in the day, as Steve said, you know, there was like two, three, four drugs available. I've mentioned it already when I talked about that trunk of that car and the guy opens up his bag and you literally, guys, people used to do cycles back in the day based on what their dealer had. It wasn't what they needed. It wasn't ideal situation. The guy didn't have 15 or 20 choices. He might have four choices or five choices. So your cycle was based on what was available. And Primo at that time, as Steve said, was pharma. You'd say, oh, great, this stuff's legit. It's come from a lab. And then, as I said already, you could go see that, that Venice Beach doctor. So the situation is now that we have a lot more to choose from. But we give you the information on all of these performance arts and drugs. And an obvious thing, like I just said at the beginning, is that we have personal and specific choices. For me, for example, Debo has been an absolute staple. I, I, Debo, I love. 
Anavar I like, Decker and Sust I like. Uh, Test Infinite, which my bro- my buddies would rave about, never seemed to get anything out of it. Uh, so that you've got individual uh, choices, individual accessibility. The difference between a lighter guy taking the same dose as me versus me being a heavier guy, and so on and so forth. So again, information is always based on as big a group as possible. We're given you history, we're given a background. The reality of the situation is when it comes to Primo, it's easily faked, uh, it's expensive, and there are, as Steve said, other choices. And if your thing, as Steve's already touched upon, is to try and gain 15 or 20 pounds ASAP, then it's not going to be the drug that you would choose. If it's to get super crazy strong, if it's to be that much more aggressive and dominant, if that's the right word, uh, then Primo perhaps might not be the choice that you would have. Nothing to say that it doesn't. It's not a great drug because it's absolutely a great drug. And we can't argue with that. If we we reference Mr. Schwarzenegger again, one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, who by rumoring reputation, legend, coming from the mouths of buddies and all those many, many articles over the years, said that Primo was in there, and you go, look at Arnold, look at who he is, look at what he's become. Can't knock it on that basis alone. Right, as always, please note, we are not doctors, and the opinions on this podcast are hours and hours alone. It's our view, it is based on our experience and views on the topic, a podcast for informational purposes and entertainment only, the freedom of speech and the First Amendment applies.